On today's show, we're asking ourselves, can we find the time to carve out a healthy family dynamic in the throes of busy family life? It's all coming up on today's show, so stay tuned. Hello and a very warm welcome to you on The Mum Show. My name's Marina and today I'm joined by Catherine Hill, UK Director of Care for the Family. Great to be with you. Good to see you. And psychotherapist Emma Brown. Hello. How are you, how are you doing over there, Emma? Not bad, thank you, Marina. Thank and today we're going to be talking about helping our families drop down some of those difficult habits, maybe those that have been going on for a while, and pick up some new family dynamics that we want to grow and breathe into a healthy family. I'm so looking forward to talking to you guys about this topic because it's quite huge, isn't it? It is really, really big. And, um, and I think, you know, the, the atmosphere in our home, the dynamics in our home are one of the most important things that um, impact how we parent. Gosh, yeah, it really does, doesn't it? Because it's, it is everything. Like, it's what we're living, it's what we're breathing. And I think we just want to be so, you know, thoughtful about what we're trying to create in our family, but it doesn't always doesn't always kind of come out in the picture we're trying to create does it yeah it doesn't at all and I think sometimes we we assume that well for a start when, when we when we first become a parent we don't we don't, we don't get a manual do we you know you can learn to drive you need to you need to pass a driving test but to become a parent you you just feel like it's instinctive and I think the, the difficulty is is that it is instinctive but sometimes that instinctiveness it, it's like it's automatic because it's we tend to parent in the way that we were parented ourselves and so quite often our intention for our for our family and our attention for for the type of parent that we want to be it doesn't always match our, our dream because actually we're so influenced by the way that we were parented and sometimes those old patterns and those old ways of of being parented ourselves tend to come through in a very automatic way without us really realizing so it it's, takes that moment doesn't it to be thoughtful and to think about it so i'm intrigued to know is there anything that you guys can look back on and think okay i know that i changed this differently from what i received as a child like did you make any conscious decisions to veer away from how you were parented and change it in any way at all that's a really good question um I would say yes. Um, I think we all are just doing our best as parents, aren't we? Absolutely. And so, you know, my parents did their absolute best um, from what they knew. And we all try and do what, what we can from our own experience. But there would definitely be some things that I've chosen to do differently. And one of them would be the way that we show love. So uh, my parents were never, I don't think, affirmed as children. And so we never really felt affirmed. And so just there's a wonderful proverb that says that our words have the power of life and death. And mm. just that sense of being able to speak life into our children by the words that we say is something we've really tried to do and tried to take loads of opportunities to do that. Because of course that's that. such a generational thing as well, isn't it? Sort of like, I think these days we try to be more verbal, don't we? Whereas perhaps that wasn't normal in the culture at the time of you know our parents mm. what about you Emma is there anything you've kind of tried to do um I think I think what we tend to do I think we either try and overcompensate so try very intentionally to do things differently or we tend to to do it to do it in a very automatic way so um and, and often the things that we fear the most um so I know that um my my biggest fear was not being spend not, you know being a very busy mum having to work all the time and not not being able to spend as much time because I remember um, my mum worked full time when I was little and I kind of always felt like I wanted to do that differently um, and so I do really in, I, I try to be very intentional about the time that I spend with the girls especially when they were little but actually automatically I ended up probably working just as hard as my mum worked because that's what was instilled in me um, you know that kind of really strong work work ethic and I think it was it's been a constant kind of battle and a 
it's caused a lot of kind of maybe inner conflict for me in terms of you know my career and, and being a parent and I think that's one of the many things that we really struggle with as parents isn't it is, is juggling all the different responsibilities and, and demands on us yeah so, yeah yeah no definitely I think f like in my family I, I remember when I was growing up my dad had a very different upbringing to the one he gave me, like miles apart, really. And um, one of the things that my parents had experienced was there was no favour on their marriage from, from, pe from their parents. You know, it wasn't an approved of marriage. And um, my dad was really conscious, and my mum, that we would never experience that. And so they used to tell us all the time. And I'd be like, eight years old, at the dinner table, spaghetti bolognese, hanging out my mouth, you know, just like really <laughs> young and mucky. My dad's like, honestly, love, Whoever you want to marry, whoever it is, it's your choice, it's your call. Because they were just so <laughs> keen to make sure that, you know, we understood that we weren't going to repeat the same cycles that they were going through. But I guess it takes a level of kind of consciousness, intentionality, because it's so easy to just kind of spill into the next stage of life, isn't it? Or like you say, yeah. to overcompensate. That's yeah. so true, yeah. isn't it? And I think, but I think we sometimes make different mistakes. So we're really conscious of not making mistakes maybe that our parents have made, um, but then we do something else. I, I saw a celebrity recently who wrote um, something like this. He said, uh, we're so busy um, giving, trying to give our children what we didn't have um, that we fail to give them what we did have. Oh, and yeah. I think that's really, that can be really true. Yes. Um, but we're just, we're just trying to get through, aren't we? Yeah, we're just trying to do the best that we can. And I think that's really funny that you say that as well, because I often um, try and lean on my parents a little bit for the things mm. I know that I'm not very good at. Mm. You know, there's some things that my parents are much more structured than I am. And I know that I can lean on them a little bit more or try and be conscious to evoke that a little bit more. But then at the same time, I know that I'm probably, similar to what you're saying, a lot more expressive yeah. um, and trying to speak those positive words a lot more than perhaps they would have been at the time. Yeah. So, I mean, if somebody's watching this and they're thinking, yeah, I know I've come from a difficult place. I know I want to be able to move on. Or, you know, maybe it's not hugely dramatic, but there's just kind of a sense that there's something they'd want to change. Mm. What do you think is the best step forward? Like, how do you even begin to make and implement those changes? Well, I think, to be honest, I think this is so fundamental and I think it's, you know, it's fundamental and hopefully it's a message that we will get to repeat over and over again throughout this series. But actually, our, the best gift, I think, as parents we can give our children is to have that real awareness of our own stuff because I think we tend to project so much of that onto our children, don't we? Mm -hmm. And often it's, it's very, very unconscious, it's very automatic, we don't do it intentionally, but but it happens. So it's how do we get from being, you know, automatically reactive to situations to being consciously responsive, which is which is what you're just saying about there, Marina. And I think one of the, the biggest things that we can do is to really take some steps to reflect and to understand our own stories mm. and our own um, histories and our own uh, childhoods. You know, I, I, you know, in, in many ways, there's no kind of shortcut to this. There's no kind of bypassing um, the childhood wounds. I think we've just got to be, we've got to, we've got to turn, we've got to face it, and we've got to kind of acknowledge what our past is and how do we make sense of that? How do we make sense of our own narrative and our own kind of story really uh, so that those responses do become more conscious so we are aware of our triggers and why we uh, why when our children do certain thing we react in a certain way because of our own past experiences um, so I think it's got to you've got to take that step and to be you know to be brave and to be courageous and to kind of start to to maybe look and reflect on our own stories and there's different ways that we can do that but I think that's definitely a big starting point. Mm, it's challenging, isn't it? It's it really is. Challenging. It is. And I think to do that without loading guilt on ourselves, um, mm, yeah. because we are the product of the family that we Absolutely. grew up in. But I think the thing you said about being um, the, uh, unconscious yeah. stuff. Um, so the way we communicate, the way we choose to resolve conflict, the way we show love, the values that we have, we'll just that will just be there. Mm. And, and so if we can choose to just step back maybe, isn't it? And just give yeah. a little pause and think, okay, I avoid conflict because I've never seen it resolved in a healthy way, say. Um, yeah. I can choose to do that differently. 
Mm -hmm. And the other thing I would say is um, have friends around you that can help. I've learned so much yeah. from just seeing friends do different things. Think, yeah. oh, there's a, there's a different way of doing that. I yeah. didn't realize. Yeah. So those... It's true learning from each other's family cultures and, and seeing the way they, that people do things is so valuable, mm. isn't it? I think yeah. what, you know, I, lo I love what you're both saying there because curiosity plays such an important role, doesn't it? In just kind of being curious about yourself and your responses. Yeah. I remember, um, we, I, I would say that I, I love my family to pieces. Like I have great kids, I have a fantastic husband and we have a lot of fun. We really do have a lot of fun. Um, but we used to find that Christmases and birthdays would be really difficult days. Mm. And my husband would just feel like really down in the dumps and just really, really struggle with those days. And, you know, to begin with, we were just like, oh, OK, that's fine. Mm. Um, and try to just kind of, you know, carry on. And it was a bit off. And it wasn't until we stopped to really think about it mm -hmm. and to really talk about it. And actually, he grew up in a very dysfunctional home where big days meant big drama. And so actually the last thing he wanted was to draw a big scene to it, but he'd kind of buried that. Yeah, and he, yeah. hadn't, he didn't have that at the forefront of his mind. Well, I'm consciously going to bury today. It just yeah. was kind of like a shrinking back. And yeah. we really needed to get curious about why is somebody who's always really fun and energetic wanting to shrink away mm. on what for me it's like the most mm. fun time of the year. Mm. It's like stockings are plenty and, yeah. you know, music and all the fun. And it just, it really struck me that, you know, we couldn't change until we got curious. Yeah. And until we sort of asked ourselves those questions. Well, why doesn't that seem to match up with, with our values and with the way that we want to live life? Yeah, yeah. I think so many people come to me um, for therapy and they, they, often, they, want, they want change. They really want change. They want change for themselves and for their families. And often, um, you know, even, even if they kind of say they want to change themselves, quite often it's, well, if only my husband would be a different way or if only my children would respond differently. But I think ultimately that we have to take responsibility, don't we? Yeah. Um, and when we, when we uh, are able to tune in and understand our own triggers and our own story, and how that impacts on us as parents or as partners, when we can do that, then the rest, everybody else will mould and change around it as well. I think um, there's a really lovely analogy of um, thinking about us as a parent or, or as a mother as the sun with the planets kind of moving around and actually if the sun is you know is, is kind of functioning well and is you know the energy's there and 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 it's all kind of going well then the planets will just keep going round but actually if the sun isn't functioning well then then everything else get, kind of gets a bit out of kilter so I think we have to hold that responsibility for ourselves uh, and we don't all need to go to therapy to do that either um, <laughs> yeah. you know obviously therapy is amazing but it, um, <laughs> and I would say that but you know even you know like what you were saying Catherine about having good friends around you having people who can you know who are just available and be to be present with you and to hear your story and to be able to kind of bounce things off and talk through kind of past hurts that can be equally as um, as healing mm. um, and even or even doing that work w with yourself um, you know using a, you know just writing in a journal um, I mean one of the one of the things that um, I often um, say to some clients is to just spend a few times a few moments just reflecting on your own childhood think about your main carers think about um, you know what words you would use to describe um, you know, your mum or your dad or whoever it is with, that kind of brought you up. And then also think about what, what, how would you, how would you kind of qualify that relationship? What words would you, would, what words would you use to kind of, um, you know, describe what that relationship was like? And also think about, you know, how was love expressed in your family? How were emotions expressed? Was it okay to be emotionally expressive or not? And then when you've kind of looked at all of those questions, really think about, um, you know, how that relates to you, how that relates to how you parent and think about, you know, are there things that you want to change and are there things that you want to shift? And it starts with that kind of really going in and reflecting, doesn't it? Yeah, I think that's really, that's really helpful. Somebody um, once said, uh, uh, suggested something that I tried, which was to write out your family tree mm. and then wow. to look back and to think, are there patterns and mm. are there kind of um, identities that maybe you have adopted. So are you the golden girl? Are you the one that's always striving to do the right thing? And that was fascinating mm, yeah. doing that. But I also think that um, 
you know, there'll be people who are parenting with a partner and there'll be people parenting alone. And if you're parenting on your own, just have a friend to be able to encourage you and, you know, just to go out for a cup of coffee yeah. and just talk about some of that, that stuff. Yeah. So I think, yeah, that's... And I we all want to be the best us that we can yeah, be, of don't we, for our, for our families. So, And I think what you, as what you said earlier as well, Catherine, is really important because we shouldn't attach shame to this. You know, we shouldn't be feeling negative, like, oh, well, I was always this, and now this is a really negative moving forward. You know, this is a good thing to be able to look at yourself and say, how can I make positive choices? It's not about kind of heaping on guilt and, and feeling bad about yourself. And I think that's why it's so important to just find people to walk alongside you that are going to say you're... You're yeah. awesome, you're doing your best, you got this, you know, and to keep moving forward, it makes such a huge difference to have that encouragement, doesn't it? Well, think, oh, sorry. sorry, no, I was going to say, but the, to, thinking about the shame and the guilt, I mean, we all do it as parents, don't we? We, we tend, to, there's always something to feel guilty about. We're always that, that kind of like feeling not good enough, but actually, it, it absolutely does, <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, but it, it's part of the old patterns, isn't it? That kind of shame and guilt is part of those old patterns that we really want to break. And so having that kind of um, intention to be compassionate towards yourself but also towards your parents this isn't about a blame game this is not about kind of you know looking back and, and looking at all the ways that your parents have failed you because actually they would like you said Catherine they were doing the best that they could with the resources that were available yeah. to them um, and if you look at their you know, they are products of, of their own parenting. So actually doing that family tree and looking at the generations can be hugely helpful in actually um, having a new sense of kind of forgiveness mm. and compassion towards your parents. And actually sometimes letting go of the expectations that we have on our parents now that we're adults and parents ourselves can be really helpful. Mm. You know, almost seeing them as kind of fellow travelers rather than yeah. our parent figures anymore. Um, can, yeah, it could just change the dynamic and just soften any of that kind of blame and shame that we often experience mm. when we do this kind of work. Yes, because none of us set out not to do a good job, do we? We, exactly. all, we all are trying to do yeah. our best. And uh, so we've got four children and ours are grown and I'm now a granny. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm seeing my children mm -hmm. parent, but also um, I've had some really great conversations with our now adult children mm -hmm. about stuff we got wrong. My daughter the other day, she said, you were always trying to make it all okay. You know, so if she fell over and cut her mm -hmm. knee, I would say, it's fine, it's fine. It's not her to just put a plaster on it. And um, you know, your boyfriend's dumped you, never mind, you know. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> And, uh, oh. and actually, she said, that wasn't great. Uh, I needed you to be a bit more empathetic. And so to be able to have those conversations yeah. and hear that as well, and realise, you know, we're just, yeah, we're just all trying our, yeah. trying our yeah. best. But yeah. yet, what an amazing privilege and what an incredible thing we have to shape yeah. a family mm. um, and make those choices. Mm. I mean, that's yeah. it's awesome, isn't it? And, to... and every day is a fresh start. Yes, exactly. Every day is an opportunity. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm going to introduce you to an amazing friend of mine called Evie. Um, we're going to check out a little video. Um, Evie is somebody who has really consciously gone to town to create a very different environment from the one that she grew up in. So welcome everybody to Evie. Hi, I'm Ebi and I'm an Iranian Assyrian. I was born in the Middle East and grew up in the country of Denmark. And I came there with my family as political refugees and that's where I later met my husband and together we moved to England seven years ago. We have three boys and we live in a sweet old British Victorian terrace and we love it here. Some of my very favorite things are family roast dinners, cooking for hours, setting a nice table, making sure my boys, my family and friends get the feelings of safety and cozy and fun and connection in these moments that I believe matter. It's been an intentional value for me to make sure we meet around the table, not rushed and not just for a minute, but really sit and take time, enjoy. And yes, it can be chaotic, but I'm still thankful we can meet together. I guess some of the family time I feel I lost as a child because of the trauma of being a refugee and the hardship my parents went through. I found healing in now seeing that reversed in a way and I get to now enjoy and appreciate what I have today. My Assyrian roots have taught me the art of hospitality and cooking and Danish culture has shown me hygge, which is a special Danish word for coziness and 
coffee, candlelight, and conversation, and yes, sometimes cake. And the English have taught me the importance of the heartwarming roast dinner tradition. I bring all that together as I create a table now for my family. I think instead of getting stuck at what we have lost along the way or what we wish we'd had, we can instead find ways and learn new ways of passing on new family values and new traditions and just these little moments that become memories that will matter in the future. All of that happens around the table, I believe, and I love it here. It's a powerful video, isn't it? I love it. It's really lovely. I think one of the things I really enjoy hearing from Eby is the way that she's, you know, recognised that those things she craved as a child, so having play having your own dinner table as a family to come and meet around and you know having that stability and having the time mm. that's unrushed and that's not pressured and I love the way that she kind of reframes that now as mm. saying now I'm getting to create that and especially when she's talking you know it would be so easy to say well then I was dragged here mm. and then I went there and this was difficult but she's I just think she beautifully re reframes it by saying you know from my Persian roots I've learned this mm. and from my Danish roots I've learned this and you know, there is something to be said whilst acknowledging the pain is really, really important. There's something to be said for just really taking that step to dig out the gold and kind of reframe things for a moment. Absolutely. I mean, she even used the word healing, didn't she? That she found healing through being able to provide this now for her family, to do this differently, to prioritise quality time and to have it all centred around the, you know, the Sunday roast, I just think is wonderful, isn't it? Because it's all, it's all those elements, isn't it? It's the quality time, it's the hospitality Vitality. It's being able to kind of create an atmosphere and a, and a dynamic around the table that feels warm, that feels safe, that allows her children to feel, you know, kind of soothed and safe and seen, all the things that, uh, you know, that, that children, you know, the basic needs that children really have and that probably Evie didn't have um, for obvious reasons at various points during her childhood. So it's very, very powerful. Yeah. Mm. It's really moving. And just the whole sense of meal times being so important yeah. um, mm -hmm. and the fact, I mean, there's loads of research that says how important they are sociologically um, and in terms of giving our children that sense of belonging mm, and really? identity. And it's, you know, it's hard because we live busy, busy lives. Mm. But actually, if we can, even once a week, just try yeah. and get everyone yeah. sitting around the table and they won't probably be, behave beautifully and there'll be people being stupid with tomato <laughs> ketchup or whatever. <laughs> um, Actually, it, it gives mm. them that sense of belonging and, like you said, enables us to have conversation yeah. and it's part of building that that sense of team and mm. this is us as a family. Yeah. yeah. It's also really intentional, isn't it? You know, yeah. it really is pausing for that moment to make sure that everybody's needs yeah. are met in that yeah. time. Yeah. I think if you think as parents, what are the things that you really remember? What were the most important things? What are the memories that you have? They're not about material possessions, are they? They're not about kind of all the successes or awards that you might have won as a child. It was, it, you know, for me, it was much more about the kind of those times of coming together. I often remember kind of, and like you say, Catherine, it wasn't always, you know, like, you know, um, all wonderful happy families around the table. I remember one time my sister threw a glass of water over my other sister, <laughs> which was just hilarious. Um, but, but those are, you know, it's those things that we really remember. And so actually for our children, it's really, really important that we give them those, those things that they remember as well, that they, they can then pass on to their children. Yeah, we used to take one of ours out to breakfast on a Saturday morning. Mm. So with four of them, all being quite close together in age, we didn't get much one-to-one -one time. Mm. So we started this little tradition. One of us take one of them out to Tesco's for oh, breakfast. Um, and I've, I've spoken about this and written about this a lot in Care for the Family, but it had happened for a little while and I found I hardly ever got to go and um, made some inquiries. And I think as mums, we're often a bit more insecure than we'd like to admit. So, yeah. am I not a fun mum? Why I don't they want totally to go with me? I agree with that. <laughs> so I asked and I found out that when I took them, um, they had Weetabix and smoothies and bananas. <laughs> I know what's coming. <laughs> Richard, my husband took them. They had chocolate eclairs, cheesy watsits and Coca-Cola. Well, so go. of course they wanted to go with him. <laughs> But, you know, that I had to buck my ideas up. And of course, healthy eating is important, but that was about, that was about this tradition, this mm. fun, this 
giving them that sense of, of belonging. And it's what yeah. our family did on a Saturday morning. And um, now, even now, um, they're old and older. And um, our son rang his dad up the other day and he said, hey, dad, do you want to come out for Saturday breakfast? So these things are yeah. important. They really they are. They really are important. And I think one of the things I love is just that how simple it is. Yeah. Because it's like you're saying, it doesn't, it doesn't, if you can do a banquet, that's awesome. I wish I could do a table like EB, mm. but I can't. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm not that great in the kitchen. My husband does most of the cooking and he does an amazing job of it. Um, but it's just those simple steps, isn't it, of just doing something together and doing it mm. regularly. And if that's once a week to begin with, mm -hmm. and then I, I think that really does start to shape the culture of your family and start to shape what it is you're trying to build. I know for my children, we, were, we, we went on a trip and we just, we just kept driving kind of deliberately, but not intentionally. We were just driving and we ended up in Edinburgh and we'd started off in Yorkshire <laughs> and it was really late at night and everything was shut and there was, there was nothing really to eat. And we found this really bizarre restaurant. I think the food was something I'd never tried before. There were a lot of dumplings and I was like, oh gosh, we've got, uh, I think the children were kind of three and six at the time or four and six, that kind of age group. And so we decided to make it like a really exciting adventure. And we said, well, this is amazing. We said to the waiter, you bring out whatever you want and we're going to eat it. We're going to let them, because we didn't know what was on the menu. I had no idea. And so they brought all this food out and we made a really big deal about how we're, it's, today we're explorers, today we're adventurers. <laughs> but what's really interesting is that that's never left them. Mm. And actually the times that you have in those intentional moments, like the power of life um, being in your words, you really can shape your family in those moments and make those conscious changes, can't you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what Emma was saying, it doesn't have to cost money. You know, yeah. uh, it really, really doesn't. We often say at Care for the Family, the poor, poorest parents can sometimes give the greatest gift of time. Mm, yeah. And um, so this isn't about, you know, exotic things. Absolutely. And, um, you know, they, won't, they don't remember. I don't remember expensive presents, but no. I do remember time spent and I yeah. do remember those special moments. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Thank you so much for coming and talking to me about this today. It's been really helpful and I feel like we've really been able to jump into what's quite a big subject. Mm. And I hope, well, I know I certainly feel very positive about some steps to take. So thank you both for joining me. And thank you too for tuning in with us. We have got so many more things that we'd love to spend time talking to you about. So if you want to hang on and check out some more, then please do check out, click on this website below, follow the link, go and type it into your Google because um, we've got lots of more episodes that we're really looking forward to sharing with you all. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.